being rock stars. Um, our next episode. Uh, I'm excited to have Greg Hawks on. We've been trying to make this happen for almost a month, but I'm really excited to finally get him on. Um, one thing about Greg, which I really love. So Greg has his own YouTube channel. How many subscribers do you have now? About 1,000, 3,000? Um, it's, it's, it's getting close to 2,000 now. And, that's fantastic. And the thing, is, the thing is, with the YouTube subscribers, that's not everybody that watches it. That's only about like um, 15 to 25% mm -hmm. Of people that actually watch it so when sure. you're thinking about audience um it's it, it's 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 a wide range <laughs> yeah so well now his channel is sourcing it in real life so you can see it on his hat he's got himself branded there which is awesome and i got new um, merch <laughs> he's got his merch definitely yeah. give him give him some support i need to get merch at some point i'm wearing my switch foot outfit which is in keeping with my theme for the month of november which is dare you to move um so let me, let me talk a little bit about how I know Greg. So Greg and I met um, a few years ago. Um, I came to know Greg in 2016 um, at the first SourceCon that we attended where I met him in person. And one thing that I've always loved about Greg, absolutely smart, knows his stuff. Um, he's presented at how many SourceCons? Four, five, I six? <laughs> yeah, I, I've lost count. So... so but what's really fun is I know that Greg is a sharing guy. Uh, he loves to share and help people. Uh, he's great with job seekers. He'll share information. So Greg is very generous with his time and energy. So today on this episode, I wanted to let him kind of run the show, uh, you know, take it where he wants to take it, and then just have a conversation about all things sourcing, about the current state of the market, uh, advice you have, um, anything you want to share, and some of the latest projects you're working on or, you know, whatever you're doing on your YouTube channel, what you're sharing with with data scraping and uh, any of the tech finding tools that you're involved in right now. So currently, Greg is you're an executive sourcer, aren't you at MIT I'm, Bank? I'm doing a little bit of everything. So I'm I'm a tech sourcer. I, I, I source executives. I source SVPs. I source I, I, I just sourced a bunch of IT auditors. So um, any anything in banking or tech, I've I have my hand on right now. So it's a it's it's a very different market than it was three years ago, and and the thing with MIT Bank, we're in the middle middle of a digital transformation. So that affects the whole entire enterprise. Okay, nice. and 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 in in the middle of the pandemic, we had our biggest banking acquisition ever. We've grown from seventeen thousand employees to over twenty two thousand employees, um, and in addition to that, I mean. Through this this digital transformation, we're we're actually moving into cloud technologies. A lot of banks are doing this right now, um, but there's there's definitely some some growing pains there, um, and it's been a very different story for us because we've been interviewing and hiring people this entire time. We're going to continue to do that, um, and and with, just with the job market, the job market in general is just very unpredictable. Um, you know, it's transforming this, before our eyes, isn't it? What is it is, and it depends on the month because. Uh, quite literally, um, you can you can have, you know, what was it a year, a year and a half ago? Everybody was it was 100 percent remote. Everybody was looking for remote jobs, things like that, you know. And now now it's there's this whole conflict between um, returning to work, coming back into the office, coming into hybrid environments. Um, but still, people are looking for remote jobs more than anything. So it's it's a yep. challenge. It's a challenge for recruiters like us, because uh, not only that, I mean, some companies are laying people off. Some companies, thank goodness, are starting to hire again. So it's it's just it's very up and down. It's very much like a roller coaster. And and um, yeah, and with that, I mean, we have to pivot. We have to adapt. We have to try new things. And that's why I'm always not only trying to help recruiters. I'm also help trying to help job seekers because if you if you build a, a, a set of tools or you build if you build um, uh, uh, some some ways to help the community it, that comes back to you you know um, ten thousand ten thousand times over every time yep yeah I know so exactly like, what you're talking about yeah and so building out a community I mean and TikTok is a great example of that because um, I I didn't really get into TikTok until the last couple of years. A lot of people will see see the TikToks or the videos that I do based around recruiting um, in engineers. Like engineers like data scraping and, and web scraping too. They'll see that 
and they'll tell they'll they'll ask me about it when I'm interviewing them. I'm like, well, I I do dabble in a little bit of that. I'm a little bit of a data engineer with some of this stuff. I'm not a I'm not a coder, but but uh, but it's a it, again it's it's providing people details uh, and and tools and resources so that it it can come back for full circle. Like like um, I like working cybersecurity jobs because we use the same tools. I'm a big fan of OSINT tools, for example. Um, oh, for sure. We talked about and, that with Dean yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, I, I was literally talking to somebody. He was he was in the he, he's in the sales job, um, and we were we were utilizing the same tools. And he had told me about a database. Um, I don't remember what it, what it was, but it was like a hospital database. And and it, and we were talking about stuff like NPI numbers and Pino and stuff like that. So um, you know, I, I have to go back into the archives sometimes. But um, but no, those are those are all conversation parts. The the better you understand an industry or a segment of people, the the better you're going to be able to connect with them. And when you talk to them and they have no idea that you're hiring for these types of positions, uh, it, it it's a real winner of a conversation. I'll tell you that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, um, but yeah, I mean that's TikTok is what? just. What resources have you developed for job seekers? Do you want to share some of those? Um, some of the job seeking folks that may come across this that could be valuable to them? Well, mainly my videos on YouTube, um, they, they mainly focus on recruiting, but a lot of times I'll put it like um, I did a video in regards to um, how how recruiters will search for people on Indeed, and that way in turn um, people will be better uh, or better better um, um, viewed on indeed they'll be able to set themselves up I've made videos specifically you know from a job seekers perspective you know how do you start a job search okay there's one video that I have well how do you start a job search because a lot of people they may not have looked for a job for 20 years they've been with the same company they get laid off all of a sudden um, and so where do you start well you start about thinking about what you've done the projects that you've worked the products that you worked with um, you, you start by um, thinking about the skills, the certifications, the licenses that you've had and, and build out your narrative, build out your story. You know, um, it's not it, it, it's not necessarily, you know, how you have the resume structured. It's what's in the resume and and really telling your story. So um, but it's it's hard right now because a lot of people, a lot of people are are applying to jobs, not hearing anything back, you know, so. How do you separate yourself? Well, it's it's conversation. People are are, are afraid like ChatGPT is going to replace us. No, you're still going to have to call people, <laughs> even if you have AI helping you. That's right. So yeah, I think um, there's a couple things you can do. So you know, as we're talking through this, I love some of what you've mentioned there. Um, I'll give a call out to a couple things that I think are key. One is know your value proposition, and and you know we call it sometimes a 30 second elevator pitch. Um, just how do you describe yourself in a short amount of information that that captures some of your accomplishments, but tells a story about who you are and try to do that in 30 and 45 seconds, because that's the attention span of most people. So if you can if you can do that on the phone and, and here's two things. One, you know, one of the things is finding your target list of companies you want to work for. So I think. That's a big one because a lot of people, what they do is they um, they're going to apply to everything they see that they feel they're qualified for. And what they're basically doing is it's kind of the shotgun approach. So you're you're basically going shoot, aim, fire instead yeah. of aim, like, fire, shoot. And it's it, it's very, very ineffective. And so the the first step is to kind of know your value proposition. That's step one. Step two is create a target list of the industry and the companies you want to work for. Get to know that, and that's that's where some of these recruiting, you know, kind of got to think like a recruiter in a way. You're just re reverse engineering the job search process. Like we go out and we get a target list of companies that we want to source from, and and candidates coming from those companies to put into our roles. So it's the same idea. You just do reverse engineering it. You're getting a a list of companies that you feel passionate about in the industry. You feel passionate about. That takes research. It takes time. You have to go, and some of the things that you can do is actually go to like use tools like Owler or Google Alerts or other things like that, that that give you the news about those companies and what's going on, or even the best companies to work for lists. Um, so yep. those are some of the key things you start with. The next one is 
um, then you got to find the people at those decision makers at those companies and and go to the top. Maybe maybe you do go to the CEO. Maybe you do go to a hiring leader that's in that space, but use LinkedIn to find those people in your network and do reach out to recruiters. We're happy to help. Yeah. Um, but those are just some ideas. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, you can actually you can actually uh, cheat a little bit because if you're looking for, I don't know, like if I'm looking for a PLC engineering job, right? I'm on Indeed right now, okay? So I'm looking for a P PLC programmer position, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is from the job seeker perspective, but I've also used this for competitive intelligence for for things that I'm working on. Um, you see the yep. companies that are hiring, okay? Uh, I don't. I didn't put in a. Let me put in a. Let me just put in Dallas. I always use Dallas. While you're doing what? that and you're pulling that up, I'll I'll add to what what I think is great about what you're doing, Greg, is you're going and looking at the jobs that are actually out there. Yeah. And then one one thing that job seekers forget to do is to look at the job descriptions and find the common themes in those job descriptions. So there might be keywords that are in each of those job descriptions. You can put those on your resume and then use that to kind of build your resume, which then makes you stand out and captures the information, which helps us as recruiters find you. Well, and it's it's again, That's having that recruiter mindset, it's because what we do as recruiters is that we take this information, we take keywords, we take acronyms um, and run a search based on job seekers or resumes or on LinkedIn or through, through various conferences and things like that. Um, we're doing just the opposite as a job seeker here. Um, but it's the same concept. It's about aligning, aligning what you're looking for to the end result. And I mean, yeah, you can you can use this to find who are the companies that are hiring in the area. Um, you know, if there's any big companies, absolutely. And you can look on the job spec. And I've actually used this when I didn't have a job spec to pull information. It's really cool. And plug it into ChatGPT and build a job spec out of it. I literally did yes. this a couple weeks ago. So yep. you'll see. How, how would you use ChatGPT, that new tool for your job search? Um, okay. Well, I'm not searching for a job right now, but. Um, so what would you do? I mean. Because there is, there are ways you can use ChatGPT for just that reason, right? But ChatGPT is great for any kind of instructions. So let me just see. And it's AI, so it's not perfect. But right. I mean, or, or you can use it for reach outs. So, for example, yeah. maybe you don't know how to send a. You just need to get some initial reach out to a hiring manager. You could ask it. Okay, I'm going for X job. Help me to make an introduction. Uh, this is what I do. Can you help me write just a basic rough draft introduction, then personalize yeah. it? That's yeah, like, that, that's you can just ask it something like that it's and tell it how many words you want. It's cool. Yeah, and it's it's natural language processing. So you literally, it, I mean, it's a bot. So you literally just ask ChatGPT what you want. Okay. So um, what did you say? Like outreach? Are, are we talking outreach or job seekers? Yeah, just outreach for job seekers to reach out to a hiring manager. Just to show them how that might be done. I mean, that's a fun little thing. See, now this is cool too. Now, again, you have to experiment with it. Yeah. You have to experiment. I don't know why that's showing up. Let me see if I can get that. OK, stop. I don't want to see that. OK, um, so again, this is AI. It's it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be written in a formula and a lot of people can tell, but it gives you a starting point. So anything right. in regards to rewriting uh, as a highly skilled, motivated PLC engineer, I've been proven track record designing, implementing. So it's pulling a lot of information aggregated from the Internet. OK, um, may not be the most detailed, may not need be the most perfect. But if you're look if you're looking for anything like rewriting a job spec or um, 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 form, if you have a job description and you need it to be put in like uh, job spec style, uh, it, th this stuff is great for that. Or if you want to have some fun with it, because I know you like cartoon characters, rewrite as uh, what's a cartoon character with a lot of mannerisms? Can you think of one? Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny. I've, I've done this with. You can even ask this to tell you stories too. 
Yeah. See, look so, at that. I look mean, at that. Okay. <laughs> so I, cool. I would use this. I use this for outreach sometimes too, because sometimes people need to laugh. So like literally I've taken a company bio and I've rewritten it as a macho man, Randy Savage promo and it's hilarious. Okay. Let me just do that. So for stuff like this, absolutely great. Um, you know, as, if you get into more of the data scraping and coding and stuff like that, not so great because it, it gives you a list of instructions. Rewrite as Macho Man Provo. And again, it's just natural language. You can tell it what to do and it will rewrite it. it oh, yeah. Step into the ring with PLC Powerhouse. I mean, the, it's it's hilarious <laughs> on how how it takes something like that and 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 formulates so lots of so things you can do creative. Ask it, here's here's something fun let's try an experiment ask it to uh write a resume template for a plc engineer that they could use but then they'll have to tailor it but they could get at least just the format yeah, like absolutely. a template format since you're using the plc engineer as an example let's just stay with that and because people don't talk about stuff like this. They don't talk about PLC. Oh, look at this. I mean. Look at what it does. Look at this. This is so cool. And then see what's what's cool about this is you can actually take this and then help it write your resume for you. Now, yep. again, it's not going to have all the information personalized to you. You're going to have to fill in the gaps. But at least what, what it's doing here is it's giving you a way to write a resume if you if you need some ideas. So it's giving you a template. And then you can just okay. take this and fill in the gaps. Maybe you rewrite it based on your own ex experience and background. So this is kind of cool. So you can also take this. OK, say we, we have this, right? This is a resume. Because it just made it. it I, I already broke it. Going back and forth here and you see how how effective this is i mean it's it's really smart technology oh, please now, okay now ask it ask it here's something fun we can try how would you conduct a job search for a specific skill set so it's maybe like a software engineer how would um search java engineer let's java do java engineer, engineer um in dallas okay, let's throw that Okay, and the other thing ChatGPT is really good with is instructions. Okay, um, yep. and and look, I mean, there's other places that we can go, but online job platforms, job postings, networking, LinkedIn, recruiting agencies, those are all all places that you can go look for jobs, right? Social media, um, employee referral programs, and like I've done this for for for. Um, you know, reasons to move to Buffalo because uh, our headquarters is in Buffalo. And again, I'm not even using full sentences. And it's really great about pulling any kind of list like this. It's it's pretty accurate. Affordable cost of living, yes. Job opportunities, yes, because we're hiring. Um, cultural richness, proximity to nature, sports fanaticism, because everybody likes the bills and sabers up there um friendly can you hear me okay by the way huh can you hear me okay now yeah i can hear you okay. fine i've been able to hear you fine oh good i it i had to, i just replugged in my headset because i was oh. hey and, and and during this time we're going to talk about some streaming stuff because i know there's there's a lot of stuff out there so actually let's ask about that i love chat gbt it's really great let me let me start a new chat can you try one? Um, one thing I thought would be fun to ask it is, what is, what are some of the professional associations out there for a specific skill set, so they yep. could network and the websites, and then it might give you see if it gives you something like that. That'd be fun okay. to kind of try to. So you can literally ask ChatGPT anything and. LinkedIn Live API integrations don't know about that. We don't need to worry about that. But Restream and StreamYard, those are the two main streaming platforms that I use when I'm when I'm doing live stream. Okay. Mm -hmm. OBS I've used before, but it doesn't integrate with LinkedIn Live. Um, Zoom, Zoom and WebEx. Are, um, really, if you're trying to do multi-platform stuff, Restream and StreamYard are the best. Um, what was what was the question Just that you asked? Ask a, ask what are the best 
software engineering professional associations to become a member of? Let's do uh, let's do a different segment. Let's do nursing associations. Oh, okay, that's fine too. Yeah, just something else that's different. I always like to use lots of examples. What are the best nursing associations? With website. Oh, ANA. Yeah, it's doing ICN. it for you. Look at that. That's so cool. And That's they have the links. Look at that. Yep, this is really cool. The, the reason this is so great is it's giving you ideas for your job search as well as ways to get information and summarize it succinctly and quickly for you. And it's, as a job seeker, you can use this to kind of Maybe you're stuck with an idea, right? And you're not sure how to go about it. This is going to help you ideate, which yeah. I think is another piece of the puzzle. And and these That's a lot of these organizations, so they have conferences, they have virtual exactly. meetups, they have, yep. um, you, you know, since since the pandemic, a lot of this stuff has become virtual, and the vir virtual conferences and things like that have become less expensive than actually attending conferences. So um, there's, let me see if I can find a community because there's also communities here you can network with people. So whether you're a job seeker or whether you're a recruiter, these yep. are things that you can use on on it from for both audiences. I don't really see anything. Sometimes you have to dig around a little bit. There's CNA accreditations. There's acronyms. There's all kinds of things that you can pull from these types of sites. I'm not going to go into all of that, but. Um, that this is where I would get this is where I would do a lot of research and you can Google the same thing or ask Siri where's, where's Siri hey Siri what are some of the best nursing associations in the US and look it's like I've got my I've got my phone and it's going to and again it's got you can't see this you can't see this but it's got a list of of different organizations there or you could ask Google no matter what you're using for research it's it doesn't have to be difficult okay like mm -hmm. it really doesn't have to be difficult. The other thing that you can do if you're looking for um, something specific. Let me just do this. I want to do I want to do Google Maps. Is that you were talking about different companies, things like that? Yes. Yes, this is a great tool that you're about to show. I do. I was using this for sales just today um, just to find different leads for myself. So like Okay, I'm going to use a, a very strange example because I want to show you how effective this is. How is, this near your, is this near in Texas? This is in Texas, right? In, no, I don't know where that is. <laughs> um, you could put in near me to get a diesel mechanic near near yourself, but I want to go in Dublin. I want to go to Dublin, Ireland, because I've okay. got a friend that lives there. An old coworker. Well, she's not old, but she's she's yeah, a former for, coworker of mine. Former coworker, yeah. And I misspelled. I probably misspelled diesel. Yeah, I did misspell diesel. This is still cool, though. See, what he's basically done is it's giving you like proximity. So this is always a good tool set. I do this too when I just need to. I did this just the other day. I was looking for companies that were nearby me that I could sell my recruiting services to. And um, I found some small companies that were great. So it's the same idea. You know, where can you market yourself to that's in proximity to you if you're going to have to have a hybrid schedule? So and the thing is, though, oh, cool. like, like these are these these are the places that you want to go. This is all driven through Google Google Maps. OK, and I don't know any of these organizations in Dublin and but with 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 this. I mean, let me just go to this one. Let's see what um, now, they have contact that, Greg, numbers. I'll, I'll, oh, perfect. Yes, exactly. They have the contact thing, numbers. The other thing I would add is you can basically reverse engineer the recruiting process through this method. So basically, you could now now that you have the names of the companies, plug them into a spreadsheet so that yeah. you have an organized methodology, and then then spell it out. So, okay, you've got your you go to their website, you see what jobs they have. OK, they got this job, this job, this job. I applied to these jobs on X date. And then you organize your job search, and then you're, you kind of keep a target list of, of stuff for yourself. I, I would recommend um, going to research librarians as well. Maybe you don't know how to do this on your own, 
Um, you know, you could ask Chat, B Chat GPT how to do some research. Uh, you saw how we used it earlier. You could go to a librarian and give them what you want. You just say, hey, I'm looking for a target list of companies in this industry. And then they can help you drill down and find additional resources. Like, for example, um, through my library card, I have access to a free business database. And it gives me the sales of the organization, it gives me their website. Um, I can see who the owners are and, and it gives you all that information. But you can also use that through LinkedIn, of course. LinkedIn yeah. is probably one of the easiest ways to find this stuff. So, you know, if you have direct connections with a recruiter, you're just two to three degrees of separation from your hiring manager in many cases. So, and you know, like honestly, you could just randomly Google stuff. Like if I'm looking for a list of startups in Michigan, I just it just popped in my head. Okay. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. Zoom Info is a database that you can utilize. I mean, uh, I don't know what Axel Genie is, um, but this that's is how I find. That, that's the data. Data Axel is actually the one I have access to through my library card, and it's free. Oh, really? Yeah, so oh, I don't free. have to pay See? for it. So you go the. That's why I say go to a research librarian. They can help you get additional resources for free that you what? don't have to pay for. But also look at this startups in Michigan. It's yes. got it's got yes. them listed. It's got. I mean, this is you, yeah. Google is a cheat sheet by by yep. by so many different means. It's highly underutilized. Okay, so um, but I mean this this is how I random I find uh, a lot of what I find is I randomly Google stuff sometimes. Sometimes taking a just a step back and having a big holistic approach can can find you what you're looking for, whether it's companies that are hiring or or job seekers that are looking for work, you know. Um, and even getting a hold of recruiters or talent acquisition directors or talent acquisition leaders. Can I ask you to do something for me fun while you're on Google? Sure. Can you put together a string and you could ask you could ask a uh, chat GPT, how would I find? Help me write a search string for talent acquisition directors or talent acquisition VPs and and maybe just specific companies uh, that are in the banking industry just for fun. This is this is something that you do every day. <laughs> OK, so if I'm looking for somebody like that, I already know if it's a TA person, they're going to be on LinkedIn, right? That's where yep. TA folks live, right? You said TA director. Yep. Do you need a forward slash by dot in? I don't know. LinkedIn.com um dot in maybe maybe not no uh, i think so actually hey, it's a slash i in yeah yeah slash in right yeah that's that designates a uh link to profile and I'll, i'm gonna explain this too um ta director don't forget your quotes, buddy. vp i don't need quotes hold on TA oh, okay oh yeah see what you're doing yeah if you're going to spell out town acquisition you'd want to to capture a phrase you use two quotes around the phrase just so you know what he's doing. Um, I think this is this is how we find people, folks. So I, I think this kind of skill is fun to teach, and Greg's really good at it. So it's fun to watch him do his thing. Well, and you don't you don't actually need to do this as much anymore, but um, I I have filled executive positions this way. So a director can be called a VP or a SVP, or uh, I would say even a manager, depending on what you're looking for um managing partner i mean there's there's all kinds of words for that do you want to change the the c to a p or sorry as c to a b yeah maybe c to what what is a S, scp oh man that's an n sorry i'm using a laptop i'm not using a keyboard <laughs> I, I have big thumbs i got your um, back <laughs> or so this is fun he's writing a string here but this is what we do. We you group terms in a in like uh, terms, and then you um, you do in a parenthesis um, between the if if you if you were doing this uh, manually, it, um, Google doesn't require that you have an and between the parenthesis statements and the other statements. You just need to write it out the way he is. Uh, it's just it's just uh, implied, and it's every every search. Is different. Every search engine search tool is different. I have tried using ChatGPT. It's in one of my videos on building Boolean strings, and it does it does an okay job. So if you're not a if you don't talk Boolean, if you're not fancy with Boolean, it's great for pulling out keywords. 
Um, but a lot of times it'll put everything in quotes, which isn't the best way to search. It's just minor syntax details. So right. let me go over this so people so people understand. When I'm saying site LinkedIn.com, uh, what that means is that I want to look specifically at this site. The reason why it I have slash I in here, I'll get to that in a minute. Actually, let me pull this up uh, and I'll show you why. Um, these are just these are just keywords. So I'm just adding some keywords, looking for somebody in recruiting or talent acquisition. So I've got some variations here. Um, the next string, when when we say parentheses, it's it's basically like a formula. It's holding those terms together. Okay. So I want when I, I'm saying saying Google, look on LinkedIn.com, look for this keyword, this keyword, or this keyword, plus. A VP or SVP or manager or VP or director. I knew you'd catch that. <laughs> I was waiting. And, I was you almost. I was watching you get there. It's like I didn't want to say and, anything. Keep going. And if, yeah, and if you want to get really fancy, fancy like Steve, like Steve Levy, he puts the use <laughs> to save space, but you don't have to do that. Um, banking or bank or fintech. But yeah, just so you know, if you're writing these strings, you can only do 32 words uh, in Google. So. That's why the pipe saves a little bit. Well, pipe means you, uh, the same as or. Unless you have a CSC, which I have a CSC, I think. And so yeah, it pulls up it pulls up a, a list of people, right? Now these are going to be much more focused around the skill set that you're looking for here. If you use the the standard LinkedIn, whether it's the free version or um, the out the the other version, um, you're not going to get as as close of a close of a, a mark but you don't you're not going to know if these people are open to work or not okay um but if i'm looking for somebody highly skilled i want the the best skilled folks and to run with look she was a sourcing manager recruiting sourcing manager right um and yeah well, no just at, just can i add something real quick just yeah one thing that i love that you're talking about so what you've basically done is you've found a decision maker here and this person, Stephanie Davidson, if you know two things, one where she's located and the company that she's at, you can call into the company with their corporate number and then leave a voicemail and connect with her that way. So this is, you know, this basic skill of finding a decision maker, a director or a VP of TA, this is, this is just showing you how we would find someone for our field, but you could do this for any field really um if you know or the you basics connect, you can just connect with them connect with them exactly that's another option too say yeah. howdy you know like you know what whatever whatever you you can do if, if i'm seeking a job which i'm not right now but if i was seeking a job i would i would be targeting um maybe not the svp level but recruitment managers um senior principal recruiters and i would reach out to uh it, it, whether it's it, because they're going to be the decision makers. So I would reach out to maybe three to five people, try to connect with them, um, try to uncover a, a, an email and and send my resume for to them. But it depends on on what sector you're looking for. If I'm an engineer, you know, like that might be not the best kind of thing to do because um, typically there's a recruiting process to go through but if I, if you're a job seeker and you see that they're hiring for a job what's wrong with connecting with them on linkedin that's the least you can do yeah right? the other thing about this these folks here is a senior level vp like this in talent acquisition you could easily connect with them and say i'm very interested in working for x company and they might be your ticket in at least getting to the talent acquisition people you can say i'm looking for a new role um you know in this area, in this discipline, I saw you had an opening on your website. Uh, could you direct me to the right person for this position? Then what you've basically done is you've you've circumvented the black hole of just applying to the job only. You should still apply. You could say, hey, I applied. I'm just following up. Just want to make sure I get to the right person because I'm really excited about this role. You have basically pushed yourself up to the awareness factor at that point so that's one way I, you could use these contacts to to really accelerate your search okay and so i'll say i, I want to look for somebody who's in like who's a CISA, who's a certified um un, an uh, auditor or something like that i don't remember what CISA stands for I, off the top of my head 
Um, you can change that keyword. You can look for the same segment. Um, uh, I think it's a certified information security auditor. You Googled it, didn't you? Yeah. No, I so, just that was off. I've I've recruited for these guys before. I know what you're. Yeah, I know it's in. It, I know it's in. It's it, yeah. It's a cybersecurity, internet type of deal, but um, auditor type of deal, but um, also SIPS too. S I S S P. That's another acronym. Acronyms are huge. Um, let me go to the California area. And you can put in, actually, let me do this. Let me try this. Put in location. Cool. And yeah. see if that ties it be so a better. That, when you do location like that, I've never, is that, that's a command I'm not familiar with. That actually will pull up all the locations in California. Yeah. That's it's, cool. Yeah. And that's so. A that's awesome. <laughs> you learn something new every day, don't you? I do. I didn't even know that command existed. That's awesome. Now you can you can also put in CA in California and, and things like that, but uh, that's just a that's a little it, trick. It just pulls up all the different places in California. That's awesome. Yeah. You get like I use it for Buffalo. <laughs> do you? So it helps. Sweet, man. But, I mean, look look how many people look how many contacts you have in the California area. Okay. Um, that's a lot of those are a lot of contacts. That's, that's a, a lot. Of that's a great starting point. And if you want to give even more specific, this is why I suggest creating like a, a target list of companies you want to work for. Then you could actually pull if you're really trying to be proactive before they get an opening. You could pull the company name, get the decision maker at the company you want to work for, and then reach them before the job has actually got one thousand uh, people that have applied to it. Yeah, true. That's right? very true. That's why um, those target lists come in handy. And it, I want to show everybody in some data scraper is the easiest way to to pull information from the internet. It's hit or miss sometimes though. So basically, what this does is it's, it's pulling the information that from our search. So you have like their name, you have their LinkedIn profile, um, oh, some other stuff. So let's, let's, cool, see what, dude. let's see what it let's see what it pulls. Because I always have a. Now, is this just coming off your search results then? I, this is just my search results. That's really cool, man. I like it. Um, it only has 99 roles, though. That I think there's more than 99 rows. But um, Instant Data Scraper is easy to use. It's got like a little Pokemon ball. It's a Chrome extension. You can go to the Chrome store and download it. Um, let me see if I can pull this. Where did my okay. download? But look at all that, because that's you can pull that into a spreadsheet, and it does all yeah. the work for you of creating it. Yeah, and then you uh you have yourself what you have yourself is you have a lead list, right? Mm -hmm. Let me see if it pulls it. I just, I just want a CSV. It's opening up on my other page here. Okay, is this is this the one? Check that out, and then you can just well, add rows. It's giving you titles, location. It's got all okay. sorts of cool stuff on it. The main thing that you need, though, is right here is the LinkedIn profile. OK, yep. And I could tell that some, there's some people from Canada because of the way the the URL is. That's that somebody in India. Um, that's somebody in India. That's somebody in the UK because of the name, the way. So whenever you're looking at stuff, always look at the URL because it gives you more clues onto what you're looking at. Um, and again, this is Instant Data Scraper does not do the best in gathering information. Um, I also use Data Miner religiously to get this information because I like to customize my 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 scrapes. And again, like it, um, because Instant Data Scraper is hit or miss, right? We've got a, a list of a hundred people, right? So there's all there always needs to be a, an alternative, and hopefully Data Miner won't break on me. Let's see. How long have you been sourcing, Greg? Um, I've been I've I've calculated I've been in recruiting since 2006, something like that. I got That's into awesome, heavy sourcing man. about seven, ten years ago when I was working on I think it was about eight years ago. And then 
uh, company laid me off and I just absorbed as much as I possibly could and never looked back. Um, that's why I like my live streams because I'm always learning something on my live streams. You know, mm-hmm. I don't just do it for other people. I do it for myself too. <laughs> yeah, I'm learning stuff from you right now. It's fun to watch you. I, I love seeing your... This is exactly what happened with with Dean yesterday. We learned so dang much that it was just so fun watching him do his thing. And he just, he's created his own little tool now. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we have all kinds of tools that we create. Make so. sure we um, we touch on your website before you we run out of time. The, the, the website, the, really the best thing is my um, YouTube channel, my YouTube channel and my TikTok channel. That's where most of the new stuff comes in. Gotcha. Cool. Um, gosh, I have a lot of scrapers. I might need to update this. Every once in a while, they'll break. Let me just see if this does a trick. Okay. Oh, I got the first and last name. So this is a scraper that I've built so that other people don't have to do it. And it's it's got 121 rows. Let me see what this looks like. Yeah, uh, sure. Pull it up. This has been a really fun conversation, my friend. Hey, man, I talk about this stuff all day. You shared a bunch of stuff. But yeah, I'm. what I want you to do in the next 15 minutes uh, before you have to go, um, let's get let you just kind of drive wherever you want to take anything. Like if there's, you know, for sourcing and recruiting folks, if there's something that you're excited about that you've learned uh, that may help them, we can shift from job seekers to you yeah, know, well, straight sourcing. The, the, the thing really, and, and this is with data miner. So whatever tool you're using, whether it's instant data scraper or data miner, um, I like data miner because you can literally formulate this however you want, but it takes a lot of insight into configuration. Fortunately, there's nerds like me that that build recipes so you can utilize this. So um, there's a learning curve with data miner. So if you if anybody wants to learn more about that, I would suggest like literally going to my my YouTube page because I talk about data miner a lot. Um, let me pull it up because. I mean, really, that's the best. Re- that's why I do those live streams, because a lot of times I have to figure it out and it helps people see how Visual to do learning. this <laughs> yeah, as as I'm doing it. And really, that's the future is is live streaming and Twitch and stuff like that. So. Um, let me pull this up real quick. Well, yeah, I have to tell you, this has been awesome. Really, really fun today, man. And just just letting you do your thing. It's so fun watching you. It's like the, the level of talent in your brain. <laughs> well, this is the fun part, man. This is the this is the this is what you this, enjoy. I like watching you this, do this. This is the fun part, and um, like literally, I mean, I I was using ChatGPT to create Boolean strings. I have examples of me doing it live. Um, how to search for diversity inclusion sites. How to use OSINT tools, which we might have to do another session about that today. Um, the Department of Labor. Department of Labor is great for competitive intelligence. That's something that's highly unutilized, right? Let's so, about, yeah, show and, us that, man. Go, go a little um, bit of a. I know you can't really show us on your channel there, but go to no, go to show us some of the competitive intelligence stuff that you've done. I I did a, a video on this because like it's such a, a useful bit of information, and it's a government site. So like you're looking for executives. How about all the chief executives? Ooh, look at that. What are, the, what are the chief executives making? What's the average salary? What? And this is as of 2022, so it's pretty accurate. It's pretty recent information. Yeah. Um. So what are what are the what are or they what, making? What your job is worth? This is a great tool for that. Ooh, em, what's employment this? of chief executives Ooh. by state, may two, and so you can see where the can, the highly can you populated. Find one for recruiters too. Um. Let me see. Um. I think they have. They have a lot. <laughs> they have a lot. Human resource managers. Um, I don't know if they have recruiters. Human resource specialists. We'd probably fall into that, to be honest. Right. I did. I, I did an example this is with. Really um, fun. So cool. I don't think. I don't think we would probably fall in. Um, so you have to be pretty general with this stuff. But legislatures. They had physics folks on here too, so I had to I had to do let's the go, physics. Let's check human resource specialists just for fun. 
where was that? Where was that? So yeah, like, yeah. and this is just one aspect of of this site. There's so much information. There's so much information you can this utilize. This is cool. So um, you can see hourly wage. You can see annual wage. They have a breakdown um, within the different industries, employment services, at the mean that these people are, are making. Um, just a ton of information. So, um, and yeah, this is free competitive intelligence. You know, like Talent Neuron and some of those those websites, they pull a lot of information from this. Okay. Um, yeah. Very you can cool. see the high population areas of of whatever job that you're you're looking for. You can see the states with that that have the highest number, the mean salary. So if I'm looking to relocate to Florida, for example, that's the mean salary, right? Um, I could t say see that that's pretty pretty close to what Texas is. So I should be asking for you know something comparable to what what I would be making now if I was looking for a job, right? Um, mm -hmm. And they have the, I love the heat maps. The human oh, yeah, that's really cool. So it shows just, where most demand is too for that job. Yeah, just tons of information, right? And you know, not enough people talk Look about at the this. county information. That's really interesting. I, I know, isn't that great? So like, yeah, I mean, if you're looking for for this type of information, it can you can go you can go into some really some uh, some rabbit holes down here. Um, but yeah, so I mean, just just lots of lots of information, and and that's why whenever I see something like this. I make a video on it because that's something to note, you know. So um, you give it bite sized tidbits on a specific topic. Well, yeah, and, and <laughs> there's so many that, things you could talk about. <laughs> yeah, the the thing is though, like my audio was actually not working when I did the initial video, so I made a second video on it. But um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of of things that you can do. There's a lot of things that you can you can uh, uh, find out if you just <laughs> and we gave. We, we've talked about what's using Siri, using Google Maps, using Google, using ChatGPT. Those are all ways you can research, search this stuff and find stuff, you know. What's um, your hardest search you've ever done? The the your, hardest search I ever your done. Your hardest recruitment, I, I should say. Uh, it was actually one of my, my first um, agency-based searches. I was looking for a monorail engineer. I've actually done a Whoa. presentation. Yeah. That's so interesting. And the monorail engineer, okay, um, let me see if I have the presentation. It reminds um, me of that Simpsons episode. Well, what? the last time anybody had worked on a monorail prior to me searching for that, and this was like seven, eight years ago, right? Um, it was when they worked at Disney. And now, oh, yeah. like, I did a presentation going back back there, um, and and I would have... I would have gone in a lot of different. I would have found at a lot of different places. I went to a lot of different places um, than I would um, back then, because I I've just gotten better at using Google and stuff. And like Google is is great because it'll it'll list you. It'll give you some some highlights and um, I don't know. They just they're always improving the Google in every way and facet. So I mean I would go to pen sites like Google Google Pens, um, free pens online. Um, that is all stuff that I was pretty new to back then. I don't think I knew about all that stuff back then, but um, I can actually put this. So that, yeah. So if you're looking for the presentation, it was wrestling with tough sourcing. It's based off of wrestling because <laughs> I thought it was accurate. <laughs> so um, going back to your earlier theme when you were when you were using ChatGPT to find that. <laughs> I mean, like the, really the language of that guy. <laughs> Well, hey, Mike, I mean, so cool. you're the guy that would, would look up cartoon characters on LinkedIn and prove that they were not really who they say they were, right? Yes, so, yes. Well, so next time... We, I have to give Steve Levy credit for that. I, I can't take full credit for that. Although I do like doing... I like the LinkedIn group um, where we can post that fun information from time to time. You yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of fakers out there. <laughs> or but, I, mean, um, I should say. But yeah, um, and, and that's the thing is that YouTube is highly underutilized. Like, let's try to look for a mechanical engineer. Um, uh, where, where is a, a, let's go New Mexico. I just want to see if there's anybody in New Mexico, right? Okay. And mechanical engineering jobs, employment in Albuquerque, New Mexico. That, so highly Look, underutilized. there's a Dallas fan. I know there's a Dallas fan. I'd see, that's the thing. Um, it's amazing what you can find. And this guy looks like he's he's a mechanical engineer that has his old YouTube channel. He's got 152 views. They are just like us. 
They're literally just yep. like us. They're they're nerds like us. If you're looking for anybody, you could probably find something on YouTube or TikTok. In fact, like TikTok is super active. I would I would go to TikTok first, especially if you're looking for anybody globally, because there's if you're looking for if you're recruiting in global jobs if for global jobs, you, you should be using TikTok. It is a it's a done deal there. So, um, but I mean, look at this. I mean, yep. I didn't yeah, have I to. I covered really... this in my SourceCon presentation too. I said, go look at YouTube and source from there. Uh, the, do me a oh, favor. There's... Look at look at HVAC engineers. I was working on this really crazy HVAC service tech role. HVAC and HVAC or HVAC R? HVAC, just straight HVAC. HVAC. I know. Um, I. I've found those before. I've yeah, see, those. like they got these how how to stuff. And yeah. then what's interesting, go to the comments on one of these yeah. vids. And <laughs> let's just show you this is one of the funnest things. So one of the funnest little sourcing tricks is you see all these people and their their usernames. We're yeah. creatures of habit. So all these people are gonna probably use the same username. And they they're they, and then you can find these people uh somehow it, by just using so like take that at Anisri or whatever, and take one of them and just throw it into Google for fun and just or however you do your magic. I, I just like to take the username and see if there's another username that pops up. You know, you know what I do, Mike? I scrape the list of comments <laughs> and I'll go. Yeah, and see, find that's them. another thing you can do. You can you can do see, use the data scraper. Totally. It's the data scraper. You get you get their you get their the comments and how popular they are. And oh look, so you even it, have the YouTube. Uh, it pulls in their YouTube ID too, doesn't it? Yeah, look, you have this guy's name, right? There so, it goes, yeah. So it, <laughs> this, this is stuff so cool. about George Santos, that's funny. Um, but yeah, just, oh, it, it pulled from here. That's what it did. It's, so it's, like I said, it's hit or miss. But yeah, what I usually do, if I see one that interested me, they had a really intelligent comment. I'll take that one, com I'll take that username and I'll pop it into Google. But what you, you can use the data miner plug it in that way and then you have all your people there and then you just go and search for the tidbits people leave all sorts of breadcrumbs it's like you're going on a search for you know it's like the the easter egg you yeah. know like in video games like they leave their own easter eggs out there with their usernames and then you can go find their you can find their contact info that way <laughs> yeah i mean you could just google their google their screen name a lot of times that's what um, i do yeah let me see if I can copy this. I just want to copy this. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to start using Insta Data Scraper more. You sh you should. Which is the better one? Um, is Instant Data Scraper? Which one's the easier one to learn? Instant Data Scraper is the one that I go to. Um, Instant Data Scraper is the one that I go to. Um, because it is it is hit or miss, but I I also have specific things that I'm typically looking for. So I use data miner a, a robot, lot. see? There's a badge of honor. I am a robot. No, wait, I'm not a robot. That's right. Okay, so there's no matches. But let me put him in name check. Name name check. Mm -hmm. That's another good one. That's cool. This is old school. This is old school stalking. Um, you can also, I didn't mean to pull up. It's the not build. stalking, it's sourcing. Yeah, that's that's the PC term. Professional stalking. Let me see if I still have the OSINT thing up. Oh, look at this. Look. This just this just checks to see if they're on anything across so all, the, all these different options, and then you yeah. can find them this way. I don't know if this goes anywhere, um, but that's an example. The other thing is, if I can find this. There, there is a screen search or screen screen search that screen name search on Intel techniques, but I have to go and look for it. I think it's under tools. Um, is there a screen name search here? I don't know. I love name. this site. Usernames. Usernames. There we go. Okay, so this is his username. And I mean, you can just click all these and open them all up. 
So if I want to submit all of them, it'll look up, up all these automatically. OK, um, so it's 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 under intelltechniques.com slash tools. OK, mm -hmm. and I've done a video on this, too, because I think it's it's highly underutilized. And it's a really like, cool trick. So, if, 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 for example, you don't have to go to name check. You can just do this and it'll pop up all these. It'll, it'll do a search on all these different platforms. Look, see, I'm going to I'm going to break our stream now. <laughs> But it's looking them all up and just an easy way to find people. I don't know what that is. That doesn't look good. Oh, look, you found a Gmail. Where? Just went back a minute ago. It said something G at gmail.com. Well, hey, there you go. Yeah, it just it popped up on one of your screens. I'm not sure which one, but yeah, it was well, one of the user ones wait. that... Well, I've got two minutes until I have to go. <laughs> so, Dude, it's been so fun. Oh, my gosh. This we'll was, have to do a part two because we, we're just getting into OSID now. We covered so much. Holy cow. Um, but no, we should. If you want to come back, just send me another invite. We'll do part two with you. We can do it. We can do it and make it work. Um, but no, it's, it's always a lot of fun. And, and just to let everybody know, I'm actually going to get out of my cave and I'm going to be at SourceCon in Orlando on April 9th and 10th. So if anybody wants to meet me in person, that would be the opportunity to do it because I don't come out in person very often anymore. <laughs> so, well, I'm glad they got you back on stage. We needed you back on stage. It was really well, good. That I have I have like 40 slides of stuff. I'm I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to all of it, but I do have like some hackathon hacks at the end. So. Um, and it, because they, sure you share your slides with me too, I, I will. They they uh they put me right before the hackathon. I'm like, okay, well, put well, it on I'll your LinkedIn profile, my friend. Make sure you put your. I think oh, you do that, right? My LinkedIn, my LinkedIn is out there. I'm the the only other Greg Hawks that's out there. The other Greg Hawks is the is the you, the card. You put your presentations on uh, on. LinkedIn, I haven't I haven't as much anymore. But if you go to my website, which you see here, I mean my uh, my LinkedIn page, I've got. Most of everything that I talk about here, somewhere. Oh man, That's I've got, awesome. I've got links. I've got, yeah. You know what? I did have it. I don't think I put my merch, uh, thing on here. Maybe I should. So people can, people this can. This was so uh, freaking fun, man. I know um, you just really loved it. <laughs> just, good That's job. why I want to do it. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. So we right, need, well, right we'll here, get you got, back. Do you want to do part two? We can do part two. We probably need to do part two because we we did cover a lot and we'll probably be able to talk a whole whole another hour on this stuff. So let's do it. All right. Just send me a note if you want to do it in December. We can. Okay. I'll I'll see what happens. I might be traveling a lot, but nice but job, no, man, Greg. I, I Even, you... Either that or January. Um, we'll do a part two, and I'll I tag you. It's... I'll tag you in the uh, in the invite. Um, once this goes out, I'll tag your channel. Yep. All right, so Greg. Want... Go ahead. What... What I want you to do is I want you to take a look at StreamYard. Um, Restream has had some issues with with um, uh, some of the some of the different audio. But if you if you use StreamYard, you can plug this video in and then distribute it among various channels. So if you have a Twitter nice. account, if you have a YouTube like account, it. if you have a LinkedIn Live, uh, live uh, LinkedIn Live, um, it's much easier to distribute that stuff, and I'll get you more subscribers that way. Sounds good. I'll definitely give that a shot. So if you want right. to talk, if you want to talk about just that, then we can talk about just that, you know, in the upcoming weeks too. Sure. That'd be awesome. All right. Merry Christmas, my good friend. This was so good. Well, nice yeah, job. Thanksgiving. We haven't even had Thanksgiving. Oh, that's right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I mean it's holiday season, right? Yeah. Okay. I well, get ahead of myself. Yeah. I got I gotta <laughs> run. I gotta go pick up my, my daughter. So yep. I'll talk to you later, dude. Okay. Yeah. Good to talk to you. This was so fun. Good job. Yeah, it's great catching up, man. We'll do part two. All right. Very soon. Bye.